Space Pop. I was thinking that at the time. It's 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock? Okay. So, nobody's here. Selection night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming. Tonight we have Vern talking about the CQWW contest. Yeah. Hey, hey. Hey, no, I'm glad to be here. I mean, when we always, after a long time, I was here last week, and uh, this happens a week later. Here with a lecture, we spoke about potentially giving a lecture about the World Radio Team Championship. Am I loud enough? Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, which I takes a bit. Well, took a while, would take a while to prepare, and I had the presentation which I could base this one on about CQ Worldwide DX Contest. So that's uh, what I'm talking about tonight. CQWW, it sounds magic to me, but uh, probably not to all of you. Uh, if you're asking my wife uh, which months of the year she does not like, it's October, <laughs> November. <laughs> These are the best months for me, and the reason is this CQWW. <laughs> so what is it? Um, I will actually give you a quick overview about the contest itself, history, about objectives, what it is about. I will talk about the new rules in 2014 and also a little bit about lock checking. I mean, I hope I cover it in a way that it interests all of you with different kind of access to contesting. Our hobby is very broad and I appreciate that. So what are the objectives? Uh, the objectives are pretty much clear. Well, you make as many contacts as possible in a certain period of time, which is 48 hours. In this case, with as many countries, the WIE countries, and as many zones as possible. I get to the multipliers later and explain that in a minute. Exchanges RST 59, 599, and the zone number. And we're CQ zone number, we're in zone 30. Total score is uh, easy mathematical QSO points times multipliers. So QSO points, you get different points for different uh, contacts with your own country, zero with your own continent, one with a different continent, three. Multipliers are, as I said, the XCC countries, the XCC, that's what everybody of you knows. WIE countries, that's worked all Europe, uh, administered by DARC. The difference to DXCC is they have a few additional countries in, on their list. For example, Sicily, the European part of Turkey, and a few others. And the other multipliers are zones. Those of you who are not familiar with it, we're talking about CQ zones. There's 40 zones, and we are right in zone 30. Western Australia, Northern Territory are zone 29, also multipliers. So the objective actually is to work as many QSOs, or work as many stations, and as many multipliers per band. A little bit about history, CQ Worldwide DX Contest. Well, it actually started as uh, under a different name. But CQ, as we know, the magazine sponsored it and started it in 1948, which is quite a while ago. The rules are based on a contest which originated in 1939, so a fair while ago. Uh, in the first CQ Worldwide Contest, 1948, there were about 700, no, 600 entries, log entries, all together. You'll see in a minute how many we've got today. This is the first announcement. Well, why did I put that in? I just want to read out a few things. One is, it makes reference to other important international contests. VKZL. Yee. So our contest here, which is now these days, the Oceania DX contest, is older than the CQ Worldwide contest. Then, it talks about, or it says, it seems to be already pretty well, oh, sorry, the year seems to be already pretty well filled with activities of interest to the DX-minded amateur. 
However, in the Worldwide DX contest, we hope to present some things just a little bit different from the usual run of contests, something which you believe should find a definite place in activities of DX. And it has, in fact. Um, they were a bit concerned, I mean, about filling up the contest calendar over the year with a contest. Well, I mean, today's a different story. We're talking actually today, next weekend, there's 20 contests, 15 or 20 on one weekend. Times have changed. This is an early map of the world with the zones and you see very much similarities. It hasn't changed. This is from 1939. So why CQWW or CQ Worldwide Contest? Because it's fun. And it can be fun for everybody, not only the contest enthusiasts. And I'm about to talk about that here now. It's for the series competitors, DXers, for travelers, for everybody in this room. Now, the series ones competition you want to enter, well, you've got to ask yourself who you're up against. Are you up against the world's best? Are you up against your mates? Are you up against a certain peer group? You've got to define it. You've got to select the category and uh, set your objectives. Don't be too hard to yourself. Uh, what entry categories do we have? Well, there's a single operator in different forms. There's multi-operator in different forms. There's overlay, single, band, high power, low power, QRP, you name it. Combinations of above. So the important thing is here, uh, when you set objectives, don't reach out for the stars because you might be disappointed. Now, here's a quick check whether your objectives are realistic and their starter base is available. This is what you've got to do. Am I competing against the world? Oh, 8,000 QSOs in 48 hours? Maybe not. <laughs> uh, am I competing within Australia? Still no. six and a half. This is a great multiplier run when you look at the scores. Maybe not a good start. Getting closer, Australia. About well, four and a half thousand, five hundred fifty multipliers. But still, it might be a bit too high. You can narrow it down. You can actually say, okay, only I'm competing with the eastern half of Australia, zone thirty. All right. Scores come down as an entry, or you say, all right, well, I may compete very specialized, very focused on one band, low power, eighty meters, Australia. There's, there have been only two entries so far. <laughs> 1999, 2002. Maybe it's time now to beat them. Now, now, about four slides ago, I think I saw your call sign. Yes. Yeah, a with a serious number of QSRs, right? Yeah, yeah there's a few. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, you always got to keep in mind there's variables in this game. It's, it's mainly operator, station, location, and of course, propagation, the conditions. So operator, it's the skills. There's, there's real great operators in this world, and they usually win. Station, well, I mean, if you only got a dipole, it's hard to win against someone at your level who's got a five element beam. Keep that in mind. Location, well, if you're here, with, here in Sydney, it's hard to compete with the ones further up north, because 10 meters might be open in Queensland, but not in VK2, not in New South Wales. So there's all these things which you, well, except for your skills and the station to a certain extent and the location, it's out of your control. And then there's this one down here. It's luck, or what's called Murphy, it's neither or. This guy usually takes over most of the times, Murphy. So, well, it happens. Sure does. Now, this, this was for the competitors. Now, what about those who are just interested in the X, work in other countries? Why don't you set a goal and say, I want to work the XSC in 48 hours. I want to work for the WAZ, work all zones, all 40 zones in 48 hours. I just chase new ones. CQ Worldwide last year, SSB, there was uh, Yemen on the air, which is a pretty rare one. So, just work them and a few others. Or you want to enjoy pile-ups. You just go on the air, you, you practice your skills, switch on, 
Australia is still they like us. We we because we're on the other side of the world from Europe, they like us. When you go on the air with as a VK, get a pilot. Okay, signals need to be fairly strong. You can't you won't get a pilot in from Europe with a QRP stage. Um, or you just want to test new equipment. QRP or KX3. Just try how far you can, can get, what you can get, who you can work, or a new antenna. Now, what's on? For example, this is the stations or the, this is the logs. The sub, logs that were submitted were assigned a spot. Each log was assigned one spot on this map. This was last year CQ Worldwide SSB, 227 countries on the air. 227, I think it's a fair bit out of 300, whatever we've got, 50 or so. Or, the other in you might be the traveller, who likes to go somewhere well, with partner, um, by yourself, with your radio, without your radio. There's a few options. You can go, you, you can go on purpose to a place and without taking your radio. You can work from a rare zone, you can work from a semi-rare country that's more forgotten. You can visit the ex-lodges, they offer their uh, lodge or their, their QTH basically for against pain. They've got antennas, they've got the setup radio, you can book it in. Or you just visit a friend, friend around the corner, the one who's got the fiber on them. And you've got the dial for, who lets you work. On the station, or you go somewhere with your equipment, equipment, antennas, and set up station from scratch. Patrick, you're going to do that. CQ Worldwide CW again at the farm side, at the beach, just to to participate in the contest, to check out the antennas, propagations. If you happen to be somewhere in a country, a rare country, why don't you ask a local club? If you can join them, if you can go there, if you can make a few QSOs from the club stations. Now, these are a few examples now what I did. I mean, and, and it, it shows you really... Uh, I never had a station at home. And it's a few different scenarios I was in. And it's, it can be done. I mean, you, you only have to ask and think outside. Be a bit more proactive. This was a group of us in 1988. I'm here. Uh, we went to Luxembourg and set up field day style. We went with two trucks, had the antennas in the back, mostly Germans, a few people from Luxembourg, and uh, just had fun. This is the equipment we had in those days, not the KX3. <laughs> <laughs> So that was besides, and, and this is multi-operator, besides actually the fun you're having by yourself sitting on the radio, it brings another dimension, and it's a social one, when you have several people joining the same. Uh, I'm having fun. This was in oh, three years, actually. Early 90s, I went to Jordan to visit a friend of mine, who wasn't my friend in the first time, but became my friend. He lived there, he worked at Klaus j 19 bc he was from the same area in Germany where I'm, I'm from. Just asked him, can I visit you? And I went over, booked a flight, stayed at his house, used his station. Uh, yeah, perfect. I mean, great host. Of course, I mean, there's etiquette. Etiquettes and etiquette. Not etiquettes, etiquettes, which you <laughs> got <laughs> <call it. laughs> These days it's etiquettes. <laughs> um, this was my first. I went up. I arrived. Oh, this this is. You're asking my wife Claudia, and she will remember this one. Uh, 1997. That was the year when we came to Australia. I arrived in October, uh, and she arrived one week before. CQ Worldwide CW in November. So she was here for a week and I flew to Darwin. And there I visited uh, the club station. 
I wasn't here at this, I wasn't familiar with the areas yet, but I think 1999 and 2000 or 2001, there's a few years when I came to Terry Hills and operated from the old location, club station, and it was Siki Worldwide Contest. Um, there's a compromise. 2003, we went together, Claudia and I, to Broome and said, well, okay, half time. She picked a nice bed and breakfast. Second half. <laughs> I prefer to stay in this cabin on the campground. <laughs> so that was the deal. I took uh, well, basically what, what is possible to take on a plane. Despite I've been in a few verticals and equipment. <laughs> and I operated from the, the campground up in Broome. Secure Worldwide, CW 2003. And I set an Australian record from there. So, uh, um, or a de expedition. I mean, that's what, another model. I went to, to Caucasus scaling a few years in a row. Uh, well, I must admit, it was always centered around CQ Worldwide. But it was I operated before and after because the country was rare and in demand. But there, there was a combination. I left the equipment at the lodge, and each year I came back, I just set it up, peeled that style. A uh, little bit of wildlife here, a caterpillar. That was one year. <laughs> was a bit distracting. Uh, then uh, this is a multi. Activity from Perth, VK6 A and C club station, where in 2009 we get we got together. That's myself, Kevin, VK6 LW, DL5 LYM, and DL3 DXX, both of them are currently on on board how, and we just had fun. We got together. They came over just for the contest, and well, basically did my go on the right hand side, he asked me a few months before the contest, hey, what do you do? Show it. And, and this is, there's dynamics in this world. There's, they really came only for this contest to Australia. Uh, and, and last year, well, that was a bit like a short notice thing. I had to go back to Germany. I actually had different plans, but then I rang Josep. He has six, uh, oh. Is EA6 BF. That call song we were talking about. <laughs> so he's on the uh, Balearic, on Ibiza Island, which is on, uh, part of the Balearic Island group. And uh, yeah, he offered me to come over and uh, operate the contest from his station. While we were, Claudia and myself, we were uh, renting an apartment at that time. So really didn't uh, uh, infringe too much on his privacy. But yeah, 48 hours. I was there, fun. I didn't end up really up there, but it was a great experience, propagation wise. So that's. Um, that was. Uh, I'm a bit confused, 2013. I thought I wanted to write 2014, but because we're talking about the new ones, let's look back. Now, this is the next section I'm talking about. What happened last year? Just a few highlights and changes and looking into the future. Now, this is interesting statistics. Remember 600, over there, 600 entries. Now we're talking 15,000, 16,000. And these are entries. People who submit their logs, not call signs, reports. So there's a steady rise, and if you look at, say, the mid-2000s, it goes steep up, interestingly. I mean, ham radio population goes down on one side, but yeah, that goes up. Australia, it was always around, say, 2015 entries. But then, from this around the mid-2000s again, it goes up, I don't know what happened in 2013 to be honest. Well, what happened here, I can clearly say that that's when we set up VKCC, the VK Contest Club. Mm. And that has helped to get numbers up. This is CW, same thing, well, although not as pronounced, I mean, 
you see still there's more SSB logs, you've probably noticed that, uh, the scale is different. So see, that's a proportional population. Did <laughs> 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 you have to do a rewind? Yeah, you carry on. Go back up. Really, yeah, oh, it's really the interesting thing, and, and this is not for Australia only, but you've seen it more pronounced worldwide, and Europe, you see it very much pronounced, that there's an increase in activity, particularly for this contest, in general, in international contests. Participation has increased, while the number of licenses decreased. It's... I don't know why. I mean, contestors are getting older, most definitely, but there's definitely a visible interest, or increase in interest. People are building new stations, bigger stations, etc. in Europe. It's, it's amazing. Germany is unbelievable. So, so in the past, anyone who became, who was in the war, who was in the military, had a license by default. They walked out of the military with a license in the mm. other time. So that's why there were so many licensees in the 60s. Mm. And a lot of them are disappearing. Mm. But they were not necessarily very active as such. Mm. They just had a license because it came with the, with the job. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in Australia, it's, it's, in Australia, well, the, the contest part, in my opinion, never has really jumped over, jumped across, for some reasons. Well, the weather's too good. <laughs> That's one thing. <laughs> November, October, yeah, yeah. Wow. what do you do on a weekend? Barbecues, outside, outdoor living. That's that's compared to Europe. When in November, best place to stay somewhere inside, <laughs> in the shack, for example. So, <laughs> so that's that yeah. might explain. Uh, the other thing, what I'm not sure about, or I have no explanation of. Why it happens is why in Australia there's so little participation on CW compared to SSB in this contest and in other international contests. And it has always been like that. Now, you've seen this slide, 227 countries on the air in one contest. That's, it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, all this rare ones. Of course, we've got the center here, here, and Japan. Over there, that's the three population centers usually. That's the ones you target for your fuel service. But multipliers are scattered around the world. And uh, let me find rare ones. Yeah, well, you see, ZE8, ZE7, that was one. And the 7 0, that's 7 0. On the Yemen. Now, what's new? What's going to be new? And this is also to attract more people to participate. CQ Worldwide is one of the tough ones where you've got to operate 48 hours as a single op to take advantage of the whole. 48 hours is a tough call, a very tough call. So uh, the guys have realized, well, we're all getting older. The rule makers are getting older, participants are getting older, and they came up with an idea which is this one, I'll start with the second one. It's the classic, what they call overlay section. Single operator, 24 hours only. Perfect. You can break it up as you at your leisure, as, as long as the brakes are one hour. Sorry, it's, uh, yeah, the brakes. Or, this is for newcomers, rookie category. If you have been licensed for less than three years, go for it. You may win it. Um, yeah, it's actually, and, and these overlays are published twice in the results. Yeah, we spoke about that. So, 60 minute breaks, I was right. Now, operating time. If you really worry about, oh, I can't make it, or I can only make that many hours, look at what the average is with the 48 hours. Of course, the multi ops, they're here, full. But there's a peak around seven, six, seven hours on a weekend. That's that's feasible. Mm. It's feasible. Why not give it a try? The, no. the, the, the breaks they have to be at least an hour. Is that what yeah, you mean? Yeah. Mm. Is there a maximum? No, no. Oh, so you can go out there work for five or six hours if you only get that. Yeah. I mean, if if you you want to take advantage of and uh, maximize your score in that. Uh, overlay category, you 
should try to be on for 24 hours and mm. and break it up if you're really into it you break it up into what well, the, the, the breaks is when 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 things are slow mm. and there's no signals so entries by category if you look at it, the most popular one is single look at this we talked about uh, different power categories mm. high power 1500 watt limit low power 100 watt limit QRP 5 watt limit. So the 100 is pretty much also the one mm -hmm. which suits most of us in terms of the equipment we have. And well, I must admit, here from Australia, QRP is a bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Some people have a challenge. So, uh, well, there's an assisted category which takes into account that while well, you, you get cluster access, DX clusters, etc. Coffee, you can network and skip. Wife and skip cooks your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a, an interesting one and it's, it, it, it's not as present here where we live in Australia, but more in Europe, in the populated centers. It's poor quality signals. People are disqualified if they sent with a pure quality signal, so signal that is whatever, 10kc broad or got different harmonics or what's there. In order to get on top of that, this time starts or this, this year we start with monitoring six, with SDR radius, six sites around the world, recording the whole content. So you can actually basically track down who's had a big signal, uh, sorry, bad signal and complaints come in, come in and I'll be in check. So, was that the, the graph on the page before 3,000 people disqualified? No, 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 it was just uh, the survey. I think it was just a survey oh, about okay. compliance and, and that was oh, not, no, it, it's, it's oh. coming into place now. Okay. Now, a good resource is uh, this website, cqww.com, to learn more about the contest. Uh, and well, we don't have internet access now, but I, I could go on it and demonstrate it. But it's it's great. This is what it looks like, and it's a great resource. Particularly, it's it's in 14 languages. We only need the original one on the left hand side in English. The reason why I'm referring to it is because of this, because of the score database. You can uh, just oh. made a high five spot, so you just, yeah. but you have to put the price there. Uh, because that sets you or helps you set objectives. You, you go on, you just do a search about who you want to compete with, which area, which region, which country, which band, and you get the record or the record holders or the the winners. Very often, and this is the one which uh, I want to point out to you, for, to the ones particularly who are not really, say, as committed as others who put in 48 hours, 24 hours, you do a search on this database and you'll find, particularly here in Australia and Oceania, quite a few categories, for example, 40 meters QRP assisted, where there was never an entry in Oceania, or maybe Australia, so go for it. You get the Oceania record. <laughs> uh, these days, you get your, it's all computerized. These days, results are published and you can download actually your uh, certificate and print it. The database actually contains a, well, you, you can search all different ways across the database, find out who is best in the world, where you sit, etc. It's all there. Score records by zones. Yes. Uh, there's also a Facebook site, CQWWDX, where announcements are made, etc. Now, the new rules for 2014, for those who are interested, there is what? 
I suppose there's no one in this room at this point in time, although you might get excited, but you probably have not committed or will not commit this year to go somewhere with a group of people and participate in multi single and multi op activity. There's a low power class for this uh, subclass now for this category, encouraging the expeditions who are weight limited going to islands or wherever. Uh, to carry just their transceivers and not bother about linears and white. There's a, and this doesn't have an impact on us, but it's an interesting one, the, the club competition, and we used to, and that, that's one thing, if you participate, I mean, a club competition is more about national clubs, contest clubs, so I'd say there's only one in Australia, which is the VK contest club, VKCC. And we all, everybody who puts in a log as a club, which is also been asked for, are you a member of the club, puts in VKCC or VK Contest Club. The new rules are actually within the DXCC country, that's a club, plus a radius around wherever they got their head office. So in theory, in Italy, there can be members, can be Italians and the ones in Switzerland are living across the border, but that, that's not relevant for us. This is an interesting one. It's annoying for quite a lot of the, say, the callers, not so much the rare DX. Running stations must identify in a timely manner every minute, which means if, if there's someone rare, say, on a <coughs> on Lord Howe Island, uh, the less they identify, the quicker their, their QSO is because they don't have to mention their call sign that often. But that's annoying for those at this end because you don't know who that is. Mm -hmm. And you get so, question marks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it says, and it's all, remember, there's six SDR, SDR sites around the world, which we call everything and you can be disqualified. Fair play. Unfortunately, I mean, <coughs> I've been doing this, my first CQ Worldwide was uh, 1979. Things have changed. So things became a bit tougher. There's more cheating, unfortunately, I must say. Uh, there's no way to really control it. We try and, well, everybody tries to kind of put their hand on <coughs> cheaters, and the one or the other have actually been disqualified in this contest, but yeah, uh, basically the, the log checking procedure, that's something which tries to eliminate cheating, I'll come to that in a minute. Stay within your category power limit, that's, that's a temp, well, for some this is probably tempting, the submit QRP but they run 100 watts, mm -hmm. I mean, what's the point, I don't know, <laughs> I can't. I can't really follow this kind of logic. Now the log deadline. This is a new one, or has been in for a couple of years at least. Five days. And how to submit? Well, there's there's a different. There's still, you see, paper log. Oh, sorry, um, log checking completed in January and February, which these days happens very fast. Logs should be sub preferably submitted through the website. That's that's really the preference, or can be email. It's all automated. Uh, it's all confirmed by email. You see here what happens these days. Uh, they even check the time, they check the frequency, they cross check everything, all the logs, plus minus 15 minutes. If you're out, you're out. QSO QS doesn't count. Please check your time in your login computer. One of the things. Um, yeah, and this is, it's getting tougher because uh, just listen what people say, what exchanges they give you. Because before it was, or it's still the logs checking, oh sorry, the logging software, which in this particular contest where the exchange is secure zone, just a number, every time the same number, same number, same number. So there is, of course, you can determine it by the prefix you have, the software can. In the US it's a bit trickier because they have different zones and they can move around. 
So your log checking, uh, sorry, your logging software makes you a suggestion, and it's easy always to mm. hit mm. return. But now they're checking whether that's the right one, and uh, they remove the contest, uh, the contact, if uh, and to get a penalty if it's not the right one. There's different. I don't know. I don't go into this detail how it's uh, calculated. At the end of the day, you even get a report about the log which you have submitted and the report actually gives you a personal some personal information about this one's very interesting well there's a score reduction which happens because uh, of busted calls of uh, not in logs of so and so uh, this one the second line here that's that tells us about your capability of listening and logging. It's the error rate. 0.3 is a very good error rate. I think the average is 2.7 percent. There should be five right here. So most of the ones are somewhere yeah five percent. I mean you should five percent is high but there's look at that there's a few 40 percent. I don't know what they do. Good ears, good ears. Yeah, and, and these days you get in this report, you, you, you get the printout, basically it's a file, a text file, uh, compares your claim versus your, your final calculated scores. It's, it's, it's all there. You, you get an overview about your errors, uh, who you copied incorrectly, like, well, it was copied this one as J1YBA. But it should be J one Y P A. Well, the Y B A is a famous, so you probably went for him. Yeah, well, I mean that's the curse of uh, um, your log software, logging software as well, which might suggest Suggested, you call yeah. from mm. the database. Mm. And that happens. Then. Uh, gives you an overview about well, there's also uniques. I mean, software doesn't really uh, penalize you if there's one in your log and in no other log. You mean? But they can determine it. Uh, multiplier lists. And uh, now interesting also for you, it tells you who copied you wrong and how they copied you, how, how they loved you. So all sorts of things. There's plaques and awards. I mean, CQ Worldwide is, in my opinion, is, is it's the best contest in the year, but I'm biased. It's the biggest contest. It's the contest with most participation worldwide. It's the best of the contests. Yeah, so uh, just go for it. Get on air, even if it's only for a few QSOs. Have fun. Again, we saw this slide before. 200 27 countries. The way it's organized, actually, the CQ organizes or sponsors the contest. CQ magazine, you might know this symbol, that's the magazine that is published in the US. K5ZD is the director, and there's a few around the world and also uh, who kind of uh, contribute with their opinions and if there's questions. Um, so, yeah. CQWW 2014, last weekend of October, every so 25th, 26th this year. CW, last weekend of November, every year again. 29th, 30th November. 48 hours, if that's too much for you as a single op, go for classic, 24 hours only. And the exchange is 59, 599, 30. 30 is our zone here. Cheers out. <laughs> yeah, questions. I'm not going into how to operate in a contest now. It's, it's outside the scope. But, but if you happen to participate, it's good to expect, <coughs> well, say if there's others in who want to achieve something, so keep your exchanges and the QSOs short. In this contest, it's not un impolite, but people are not interested in what your name is, where you're from, <laughs> what your grandma's name is. <laughs> <laughs>
there's different sources. Uh, the website is probably the best. And that was it for today.